Good afternoon. This is TK527, aka Sergeant Kenna. And today I'm here to talk to you about an automated form of photography. You may have never heard of it, but you will have seen it around very much on social media platforms, mainly on Instagram. The type of photography we're going to learn about today is toy photography. And your question is, what is toy photography? Let's find out. You may be wondering what some of the visual aids are for toy photography. Well, I'm going to show you. Well, here's one example. Here is a Lego minifig. Uh, well, I don't need to explain who he is. You know who he is already. And anyway. Here is also a Funko of a gaming Mickey Mouse. And here is a uh, one in inch scale uh, clone troopers. And uh, right here is a one in inch scale uh, Mercedes 300 SL. It's an anime figure. Uh, he is one Torben scale. And at least we have a uh, one Torben scale clone figure of Commander Wolf, Star Wars Black Series Edition. He is a six inch figure. Now, according to Mon Lacute on toy photography, Toys represent our imagination, our aspirations, and our innocent childhood fantasies. The camera, along with our creativity, will allow us to capture these moments and share them with everyone. The article he wrote explains the basics of toy photography and additional tips and details to consider greatly when planning the atmosphere of the picture before you even set it up. The thought process is very essential when a photographer has to set up the environment and background before a picture is even taken. Mon Magute states, pose and compose your shots as if you were shooting a real human being. You can also combine and experiment with landscape photography and then apply your toys to all of nature's splendor. It would help greatly if your toys are captured in a moment or angle to look more human, more realistic as if they were alive. Sometimes in photography, a metaphorical object can be affected to how we as humans express our emotions. But how do you take a toy photo? Well, for the next few minutes, I am going to not only explain, but also take a picture with this tutorial coming up. Now let's find a spot. And as you can see, this is a wonderful spot for toy photography. Trees, bushes, everything. No one just trips it out. Except for that up here. But that doesn't matter, because according to Martin Mackey's tale, most toy photographers put their subjects into everyday, mundane scenes. They are only limited by their imagination. If a photographer does not think about the emotions of the moment that they intend to capture, then the audience misinterprets it, which makes the translation and the interpretation of the picture very different than what the photographer wanted. According to Heather Joy Millwood, the hassle-free toy photography make your photos outside in natural light. But the point of this is that your main source of light, especially when taking photos outside, should be the sun. But not on the sun, but on a cloudy day. The air is a hot temperature. The sun is uh, emitting its rays at a dimmer rate behind the clouds. Alright, now, taking all of that into account, we'll finally take our picture. Now, I placed them on this post. Now, you'd be thinking, well, what's the point of that? It's man-made. But is it, though? Because if I take a picture, well, right, right here, here, as you can see, you would not think that was a wooden post I put it on. And there is your picture. When others see you doing this, they will ask, what is the point of this photo? I will explain the benefits and the emotions that toy photographers feel after taking the picture. According to Heather Joy Milne on toy photography, the fun part of toy photography is telling the story. The viewer not only sees your story, but can also attach their own emotion and feelings of nostalgia to the top toy. A description of your photograph gives the audience 
a bit of context and background information to help the audience interpret and translate the photo. Not only would you feel in awe of the photo, but you also have some affirmation of how much effort the photographer puts into taking one photo. According to Heather Joy Murray on toy photography, there's also another humorous take on the Star Wars theme with characters doing out-of-character activities. Toy photography is a combination of different hobbies molded into one. It is very interesting to see a new hobby come to light, especially coming out of the dark side. Hmm. To conclude this segment, I will recap the necessary details and also important steps to consider when conducting toy photography. The first thing to consider is the emotion of the moment and the emotion your audience will feel when they look at your picture. The second thing to remember is to cast your toys in such a way that they affect human emotion and to give certain lighting effects to cast a certain emotion. Third thing that is necessary to remember is to take your picture in such a way that it tells a narrative, a story, because that's what we're doing. We're giving these toys stories that reflect our own or someone else's. But it doesn't matter. That's the whole point of this.